This week on ANN, the Adventist Church elects two key positions during their annual spring meetings. Master Guides in El Salvador help battle devastating fires. And the Adventist Church is having its first virtual global camp meeting. We'll have all the details. These stories and more coming up. Last week, we reported that Seventh-day Adventist leaders from around the world gathered virtually for spring meeting. Spring meeting is one of two annual gatherings of the Adventist Church's executive committee. That's right. The executive committee is the second highest governing body of the Seventh-day Adventist Church after the general conference, which occurs every five years. In between sessions, the executive committee has the authority to act on behalf of the general conference in session. It has the power to appoint committees, employ personnel, elect or remove administrators, and affect the retirement of an elected or appointed position before the expiration of a term for which they have been elected. During spring meeting, the executive committee receives the audited financial reports of the general conference and transacts regular executive committee business. As we mentioned last week, we have one more important story to report before we get to the rest of the news from around the world. Don't forget, you can read about spring meeting at Adventist.news. During the 2021 spring meetings, the Adventist Church's executive committee elected Paul Douglas to become the new general conference treasurer. Douglas will replace Juan Rafael Prestol Puesan when he retires on August 1st. Since 2006, Douglas has served the Adventist Church as director for the general conference auditing service. He became an assistant auditor for the GC in 1986, then stepped up to a full-fledged role two years later. After his election, Douglas expressed his honor and gratitude to the church and thanked Prestol Poisson for his leadership. He also stated how deeply humbled he was by his new role. Douglas said, I'm not worthy, but I'm willing. I'm willing to serve in this capacity, serve God and serve you, this church, as we blend together the matter of stewardship and evangelism. I believe we are in the closing chapters, if not closing paragraphs of Earth's history, and we now need to redouble our efforts and navigate these very difficult and challenging times. President of the Adventist Church, Ted N.C. Wilson, also expressed his confidence in Douglas, saying he has distinguished himself in so many ways, including a very high caliber of ethics, Christian ethics. He is someone who is always striving for the best. During the same meetings, Erton Kohler was elected as executive secretary to replace outgoing GT Ng. Kohler previously served as the president of the South American division. Kohler is a native of Brazil and he sought to follow his father's footsteps into full-time ministry for the Adventist church. In 1994, Kohler phased into administration, filling youth ministry directorship roles for the Rio de Grande do Sul Conference, Northwest Brazil Union Mission, and South American Division. He has been the president of the South American Division since 2007. During his remarks, Kohler expressed his gratitude to the GC nominating committee, General Conference President Ted N.C. Wilson, and Ng for the confidence they placed in him. He said, I believe that God leads everything. I believe that God leads the church. I believe in God's leadership using human beings, and I believe that God leads my life. God leads my family, and God leads my ministry also. My only answer now needs to be, I will go. Wilson conveyed a ringing endorsement of Kohler, saying Kohler is a very professional person, a very mission-focused person, a very skilled administrator. He is also a visionary, he has a world vision. A group of master guides from Seventh-day Adventist churches in eastern El Salvador joined the effort to battle forest fires that spread across the mountainous region of Arambala in the northern part of the Morasan. More than 250 acres of the forest terrain was destroyed by the fires. A group of more than 20 young people made the treacherous journey to transport water to firefighters, national civil police, civil protection agents, and other volunteers who were working to weaken the fires. Youth Ministries Director for the Adventist Church in El Salvador, Marvin Guzman, heard the appeal from government officials for young volunteers to assist in the firefighting efforts and called on three Master Guide leaders closest to the region to help. Guzman said the group had to scramble more than half a mile across a mountain to fill their water containers from a brook before hiking back to the fires. Each Master Guide volunteer made the journey four times up and down the mountain. Thanks to the combined efforts of the volunteers and government agencies, the fire was put out and many communities spared. 
The director of the School of Dentistry at Montemorelos University, Marco Antonio Castro, was recently nominated as one of the top 100 doctors in the world for 2022 by the Global Summits Institute, or GSI. Each nomination represents a recognition for dental professionals who, according to the GSI, exemplify clinical excellence, innovation, research, organizational leadership, and entrepreneurship at the service of the healthcare industry. Dr. Castro said it is an honor to be considered and to be on par with doctors who are recognized at a world level. That means that we are doing things well and that our work has a certain resonance and is of interest to research entities. A native of Guatemala, Castro obtained his Doctor of Dental Medicine degree from the Francisco Marroquin University in Guatemala, as well as a Master's of Oral Rehabilitation and Cosmetic Dentistry. All the nominees get to participate in the annual events by presenting their work. Dr. Castro will be presenting Montemorelos University at the 2022 summit. While this nomination focuses on dental professionals, the GSI has expanded nominations to include medical doctors, optometrists, pharmacists, and chiropractors. In previous years, other Adventist doctors, such as Dr. Joseph Kahn from Loma Linda University in California in the United States, have been nominated for this prestigious recognition for their outstanding work in the area of dentistry. Throughout the pandemic, local congregations, conferences, and regional offices of the Seventh-day Adventist Church have been doing their best to provide connection between members through virtual church services, special conferences, and online prayer meetings. And for many, these have been filling a spiritual need. Leaders at the General Conference also wanted to make a contribution. A collaborative group from GC departments had already been planning a virtual exhibit uh, hall for the GC session, which had to be postponed due to COVID-19 concerns. They decided to use the scheduled time for an alternative event that would still bring members together from around the world to encourage each other, focus on our beliefs, and prepare for the mission at hand. How will a virtual camp meeting work? Well, over the weekend of May 19 through 23rd, keynote speakers such as Dr. Barry Black, Alejandro Bullion, Dr. David Williams, and Dr. Michael John Bohonston will share inspiring messages. Over 350 online seminars will be offered in six different tracks, discipleship, education, health ministries, media, missions, and theology. Speakers will keep their presentations relatively brief to allow for interactive question and answer periods afterward. Visitors can register for any seminar that interests them. Presenters are directly involved with booths people can visit in the online exhibit hall. In order to make this a truly global camp meeting, the event will have programming centered around three major regions, Asia Pacific, Euro Africa, and the Americas. Seminars will be scheduled for convenient access from time zones around the world. More detailed information and registration is available at campmeeting.com. Well, before we take a break, I wanna take a moment to share a little bit of bittersweet news. I've had the distinct pleasure of serving as a volunteer anchor for a for the last few years, and it's been an honor and lots of fun being seated physically or virtually next to my co-host and friend, Elroy. Well, this is Elroy's official last time as an anchor for a &N. He's gonna be stepping away from the anchor desk for a new adventure of his own, becoming a father. He and his wife, Mika, will be, be welcoming a baby into their arms and, and into their hearts in just a few short weeks. And Elroy, we know, I know you didn't know that we were doing this, but we couldn't let you slip away before letting you know how much we appreciate you uh, and how much we appreciate your positive spirit. And so on behalf of the entire team here at a and we want to say a huge congratulations. We will miss you, but we are praying for you and you're welcome to come back at any time. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I totally didn't expect that. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the reads and I'm just like, wait a minute, that's not in the script, what's going on? But um, honestly, uh, Mo, it's been a pleasure to serve alongside you, you know, in more than one capacity, uh, you know, with our church. And it's just been a pleasure to share these stories over the years. And I'm truly grateful for this opportunity uh, to Jennifer Stymius for the opportunity and to GC Communication Department uh, for believing in me and allowing me to uh, serve again in this capacity for all these years. So I'll miss you guys. I won't be too far away. But, you know, just stepping into a new role now as father. So thank you very much. Yeah, we're overjoyed for you. Congratulations again, buddy. We'll be right back.
Welcome back. On March 11th, 2020, the World Health Organization declared the COVID-19 outbreak a global pandemic. Since then, life as we know it has changed in so many ways. Tragically, millions have suffered with the disease and the death toll is nearing 3 million. Because of this, Adventist Possibility Ministries designed a special webinar for their Possibility Ministry Sabbath on March 24th to help those who have lost loved ones. We sat down with Larry Evans to talk about Possibility Ministries and how each of us can watch this special webinar. If you would like more information, please visit possibilityministries.org slash events. Hi, Larry. Thank you so much for being with us today on a &N. Hey, it's special to be with you. So this weekend, April 24, is Possibilities Ministry Sabbath. Can you tell us a little bit about what Possibility Ministries is? Possibility Ministries is about possibilities. We talk about what people can do rather than what they can't do. Yeah. You see, it's grounded in the idea that the gospel transforms the way we see ourselves and the way we see others. So oftentimes it's talking about people who can't walk or can't talk or can't see. And while that's true, they are also gifted by being in the image of God. And therefore they have lots of possibilities. So this weekend is very special because this is a time when the Adventist Church comes together and we recognize your, your, I mean, it's such a beautiful ministry. Can you tell us a little bit about the Sabbath and what the focus will be um, for the Sabbath? Well, this particular year, every year we have a different emphasis with our uh, Possibility Ministry Sabbath. We, we celebrate this every year for the last five or six years. And each year I ask someone to write a sermon and a children's story that would go along with this. This particular time, the Family Life Ministries Director for the Trans-European Division wrote a fantastic sermon called Possibility Families. Now, behind that concept is the idea that no family is perfect. Every family has some, some challenges of some kind. And so what we want to do now is to talk about those families the, every family and the possibilities that they have. Now, of course, our focus is on families that often have people who have uh, individuals who may have a disability. And we don't, there's nothing wrong with the word disability. We just don't want to stop there. Right. Uh, see, it's not a matter of them being consumers of the church's energies and church's money and the government's money. It's about what they can contribute. And we want to treat them as contributors, as people who have something to offer. And so we talk about that in our sermon. We have a children's story. This year, we also have Sabbath School superintendent remarks. Larry, I know you've been working really hard, and you have actually recorded a very special program for our members to watch. Can you tell us a little bit about this program that people can uh, watch on Possibility Ministry Sabbath? Yes, uh, I would love to. You know I would like to talk about this. <laughs> we, we are putting together, we have put together a program that will air in three different global regions of the world. There's the Asia section of the world, there is the Europe, um, Africa, and then there are the Americas. Basically, it's the same program all the way through. We have a speaker, Dr. Ann Hamill, who is a psychologist. And we're going to be, uh, we, and we have different panelists for each of the three regions. Each of the panelists is, has a mental health specialist and individuals who have faced some kind of grief, suffering, uh, usually a, a loss of a loved one. I became concerned as I, uh, one morning, very early in the morning, I was very concerned about all the distraught that's taking place around the world because people have lost a loved one mm. because of COVID, the pandemic. But then it began to spread beyond that. And I began to realize that people are grieving. And there's something that ties us all together, whether we be Christian or Muslim or Hindu. When we lose a loved one, our hearts are, are, are softened and, and we're hurting. Amen. And so without ever even trying to convert them, we want to reach out to them and say, hey, 
Seventh-day Adventists understand your hurt. We want you to know that we care. And then we've asked our panelists and our speaker to give some specific ways by which we can uh, overcome our grief. So our uh, our message this this time is really uh, talking about finding joy in suffering, which is really strange title. People will want to go and make sure that they're watching the Sabbath. Where can people watch it? When can people watch it? They can get the information for this at, at our website, possibilityministries.org. And there go to the event section. Off to the right, because it's a big website, you're off to the right, you click on the dots, and it'll take you to another page that shows the rest of the banners that you don't normally see. And they can go there, click on that um, program, it says webinar, and they can find out what time it would be in their area of the world or even in the United States. You know, Larry, I, I'm so happy that you joined us today for this interview. I love talking to you about this topic because you're so passionate about your ministry and it just shines through. For those who are watching, I hope that they are a, they're able to go to your website. We'll make sure we have the lower third here so people can go and get the information on Sabbath and watch this special webinar and um, get to know your ministry and what you do. It's making a difference around the world uh, because of God, uh, Holy Spirit working. We just sense it all the time. So thank you very much for the opportunity. Amen. Thank you, Larry. Bye-bye. Coming up, Michael Yonker is here for This Week in Adventist History. But up next, Director of Adventist Mission, Gary Krause, shares about his experience with the Adventist Church in Chad. Why is there evil in the world? Christians hypocrites? Is the Bible a fairy tale? Does Jesus love everyone? Church doesn't feel relevant to my life. Is God even real? You have questions? Let's talk about it. I believe Bible. Welcome back. It's been nearly 20 years since Director of Adventist Mission, Gary Krause, visited the country of Chad. Since then, he's been able to see how Adventist Mission is helping to grow the church in that country. Adventist Mission has more. It was nearly 20 years ago when I visited the country of Chad. I flew from Washington to Paris, and I caught a direct Air France flight straight to Jamina. I went to many places in Chad and I was quickly reminded of the vital importance of water. Half the country is desert, but water is precious everywhere. And I'll never forget meeting a man who'd been waiting months and months for baptism, but there was just no water. When I got to Chad, kind church members welcomed me like I was a long lost family member. Everywhere they told me how happy they were that their world church hadn't forgotten them. I didn't know much about the country, but I did know it was poor. Not just uncomfortably poor, but kind of how are we going to survive tomorrow kind of poor. More than 80% of the population existed below the poverty line and life expectancy was less than 48 years. I think it's fair to say that 20 years ago, most Adventists living in America or Europe or Australia or wherever hadn't given a whole lot of thought to the country of Chad. In fact, even today, many of us would probably have trouble even locating it on a map. And yet, I found a mission office in the capital, Jamina. I found vibrant churches and companies. I found schools filled with beautiful children and even a small hospital. And there was a large group of dedicated, sacrificial global mission pioneers who were planting new groups of believers around the country. I found a church in Chad which, like the rest of the country, was desperately poor. But here's my point. The church was alive. It was active. It was witnessing. 
They had projects and programs. They were making a difference in their community. And how had that happen? Well, it was through the work of the Holy Spirit and through church members around the world who had faithfully given their tithes and mission offerings, not knowing where each dollar would necessarily end up. Thanks to the church's system of tithes and offerings, mission in Chad had been funded by church members around the world who knew nothing about mission in Chad. I got to thinking about the old expression, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Roughly translated, it means that whoever makes the most noise, they're the ones who get the most funding. And sometimes in our church, it's the big wheel organizations with the most interesting pictures, the most compelling video, the most heart-touching stories that get the big donations. They get the grease, so to speak, the funding. And that's great insofar as it goes. But what do we do about those parts of the world or those people groups who can't or don't squeak, so to speak? What do we do? Just ignore them? The church's system of regular and systematic offerings, what the stewardship ministries calls promise, is just like a river. Every time we give our mission offerings, we're adding water to a life-giving river that flows through often parched lands, bringing life and hope. We're helping the church grow, not only locally, but also in areas we may not have even heard of. We're helping missionaries we may never meet. We're building schools and clinics we'll probably never visit. We're helping plant churches we may never worship in. But we're bringing life to the church's mission. I don't know what every drop of water in this river does or where it goes, but I see the results and they're beautiful. Psalm 104 says, he sends the springs into the valleys. They flow among the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. By them, the birds of the heavens have their home. They sing among the branches. We have the privilege of helping church members see that their offerings are like a life-giving mission river flowing through often parched lands. This river makes it possible for missionaries to be placed all around the world. It helps the church's educational and medical and humanitarian ministries and so much more. The past few years, we've seen millions of people give their hearts to Jesus and join the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Thousands of new congregations have been started how do we care for the nurture of these new believers? How do we provide resources and materials that they need? How do we provide ongoing pastoral care? Life-giving mission offerings given regularly and systematically help sustain and grow new work around the world. And that's what the church is all about. Watch this and other mission stories online by visiting AdventistMission.org, then click on videos at the top. And finally, for today's episode, let's turn to Michael Juncker for a look at Adventist history. This week, we'll hear about the growth of the Adventist Church in the South Pacific Division. This week in Adventist history, we can look back and remember the voyages of the Velomani missionary ship, which traveled throughout the islands surrounding Papua New Guinea, located in the Southwest Pacific Ocean. 90 years ago today, on April 18, 1931, the Velomani arrived in Loma Kanuaru, village on the southern coast of Musau Island. Gilbert McLaren was captain of the ship. There was a remarkable conversion to Adventism among the people of St. Matthias group of islands, Masau, Imarau, and Tench at this time. Although not all the initial encounters are known to us, at least one of them testified to the power of gentleness and harmony in missionary work. A few months earlier, Captain McLaren and a crew of Fijians aboard the mission vessel Velomani arrived at Masao. They had been warned 
that they would not be welcomed there. Indeed, when they finally dropped anchor, they were confronted by loud and threatening warriors who were intent on challenging them or chasing them away. Under the impressions of the Holy Spirit, McLaren called his crew together and they began to sing songs. The din died down and the warriors listened to the harmony of the music. When the missionaries stopped singing, the warriors began shouting at them again. So McLaren and his crew sang some more. So it went on and on until sunset when the warriors left. Eventually, they met the warriors' chief, who was very impressed with them and invited them to share more of their music and ideas. Today, and for many years since then, they have enjoyed continuing to sing at church and for Pathfinders, etc., as seen uh, with the youth directors Barry Wamalata and Venice Kotoveke. Between 1930 and 1935, the work of the church expanded uh, to Kavieng City, the government center for New Ireland, as it is known, uh, as men from Masao came to town seeking work. The territory of New Ireland mission was Northern New Ireland and adjacent islands. Its headquarters were at the Kavieng, New Ireland province. It was part of the Bismarck Solomon's Union mission, which had headquarters at Palm Beach, Rabao. The church grew there rapidly during the 1950s and 60s until it was integrated into the new structures of Papua New Guinea's churches after 1971. In more recent years, the church in the broader region continues to face challenges of different sorts, such as the volcano that erupted in Taburber in September 1994, while under the able leadership of Pastor Wilson Stephen and his wife, Mary. That's this week in Avenue's history. Thanks for watching ANN. Join us next week for more news from the headquarters of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Did you know that the Adventist Church has a YouTube channel where you can watch ANN video, ANN in depth, and plenty other amazing videos on prophecy, health, and Bible study? That's right. Just go to YouTube and search for the Adventist Church. Click the subscribe button to make sure you're caught up each week. And remember to leave a comment or a prayer request because there are people who are praying for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now, before we say goodbye, here's some good news from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 36, verse 26. The passage says, Moreover, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Amen. Guys, that's our program for this week. And remember, you can always visit Adventist.news for daily news and videos. And until next time, God bless. Take care.